enjoy working boats that have been retired from service and given a new life as private motor yachts, then I am sure you will enjoy this boat tour. In it, I will show you around this still liveable converted trawler yacht, which is listed for sale at the time of uploading this video to my channel. But more about that at the end of the boat tour. Originally a fishing trawler, this Explore yacht has been converted into a liveable vessel, retaining her authentic offshore heritage. Extensive updates in recent years have brought her to her current condition. She is fully equipped for livable purposes and boasts spacious accommodations for up to 11 people. The engine room and tankage offer ample space, perfectly suited for long range passage making thanks to her incredible range of 5,000 nautical miles. Later on in the video, we will be firing up her engine, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Welcome back to the channel. I've really been looking forward to showcasing this boat on my YouTube channel. If you love trawler yachts, especially converted trawler yachts, you're gonna love this boat. Before I do take you around, please don't forget to give the video a like, and also please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Let's see if we can get to 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Salvatore has an LOA of 24.95 meters, a beam of 6.3 meters, and a draft of 3.2 meters. She was built in Belgium in 1961 and has a displacement of 130 tonnes. For a smoother ride and better sea keeping, she has an S-bilged steel hull. Her superstructure is also made out of steel. She has an air draft of 11.5 metres and a headroom of 1.95 metres. In terms of her accommodation, she has a total of 11 berths in six cabins. She has bilge kills, which means that she has good stability and reduced rolling motion in rough seas. These kills also improve hydrodynamic performance and add structural support to the hull. What a beautiful backdrop. I absolutely love it here. And check out some of these boats, some real nostalgia going on. But anyway, let's spin around and continue with the tour of this fascinating boat. Folks, if you would like to help support my YouTube channel, then please don't forget to hit the subscribe button because essentially the more subscribers I get, the more boats like this I can get aboard and show you around. I'm gonna board the boat via this starboard access gate over here. And let's go onto the foredeck and have a quick look up at the wow back. You know, one of the ways you know that you're on a really traditionally styled trawler yacht, authentic trawler style yacht, is the fact that this one has got a wow back. And if we look in here, first of all, you'll notice that big threshold there, look at that. Once that door is shut, you're not gonna be getting any water come through here, that's for sure. But I love what the owner's done in here. As you can see, we've got this storage area, and on top of that, we've got an inflatable jacuzzi. Uh, yeah, what a great place to come and relax whilst you're pounded by the bubbles. Skylight up there, so you've got your natural light coming in, of course. And you can really see the shape of the hull on the boat as well from this vantage point. Over here on the starboard side, we've got some more storage. And if I just pan around over to this side, on the port side, you can see behind that cabinetry, uh, we have got some more storage as well. And if I open this one, just quickly, there you can see the gear for the crane. So yeah, let's turn back out. Got some seating over here on the port side. Again, a great place to come and sit and relax, especially if it's raining or you've got bad weather, but you still want to get some fresh air. If I plant myself here, I'll show you the vantage point. Because of the shear of the hull as well, you're at a slightly higher point sitting here. You can see by the, the angle of the hull look as we look aft. Again, you'll, you'll notice on the port side, big old scuppers over there. And of course, big old scuppers over there on the starboard side. And for anyone watching this who doesn't know what a scupper is, well, these basically allow any excess water to quickly flow um, over the deck back into the sea so you don't get a buildup of uh, water on the deck when you're punching through uh, the really big waves. But yeah, I love this vantage point, really great view. Anyway, onwards and upwards. 
Obviously you've got some protection due to the overhang here from the foc'sle. If I just walk around this part and just show you the ladder that leads up onto the foc'sle. In fact, let's climb up there now so I can show you the vantage point from up here. So I'm gonna do this one-handed, so bear with me. I've got used to doing this now, thankfully. But holding a camera and climbing a ladder at the same time might sound easy, but it can be a bit tricky. But yeah, so here we've got the foc'sle. We've just got a water breaker or wave breaker there. And if I turn around, I'll show you the foremast. So look, you've got your steps so you can climb up that foremast and plant yourself up in that traditional crow's nest. Look at that. Imagine the views from there whilst you're underway. And obviously the current owner's got some freestanding furniture up here as well, over there on the port side uh, and over there on the starboard side as well. But look, you get a really good view from up here. It's quite windy today, but I'm hoping that the mic on my DJI Osmo is doing its job and you can just hear me as opposed to the wind as well. Okay, let's turn around, head back towards the ladder. I'm going to descend this, the Royal Navy way, which is front ways forward. Just bear with me as I walk down here one-handed. Always a nervous moment for me, because I don't want to slip. But yeah, so now we've had a look at the, uh, the whale back, the foc'sle, and obviously here you're going to notice straight away, if you know your trawlers, then this is something that is quite an important feature on fishing trawlers, uh, which has obviously been kept on board as a way of honoring the heritage of this boat. Uh, but at the moment, if you look in there, underneath is where the forward accommodation is. And we'll go down there in a second. More skylights dotted around the deck up here. So as you can imagine, you're gonna get lots of natural light in the forward accommodation area. Uh, the master cabin, the owner's cabin is actually aft on this boat. Uh, and we're going to head down there in a minute. But let's just walk in uh, towards the large spacious saloon. Again, check out the threshold on that door there. That's probably about a foot and a half, I would say. And obviously you can close those dog clips and that saw will be watertight. So this boat really is built for the kind of rough stuff that would keep most boats alongside, but not this boat. You can pretty much go out in anything, I would imagine. Um, Obviously down here, we've got the engine room. For those of you who love your marine engines or marine engineering, that is the original engine, ABC engine, uh, that was installed on the boat when she was built in the early 60s. Uh, we're gonna go down into the engine room in a minute, so make sure you stay tuned for that. And this ladder here leads us up into the wheelhouse. And again, we'll go up there in just a few minutes. But first I wanna show you the saloon. We'll walk through here. Now, one of the first things I noticed when I saw this, is this at the bottom at the foot of the door. Um, now, to some people you might look at that and think that's a porthole. What's a porthole doing on an interior door? It's actually a cat flap. Uh, so one of the previous owners did have a ship's cat. Um, so you've got a cat flap in that door, which, uh, yeah, it's not something I've seen before, but I absolutely love it. Being a cat and a dog owner, I can appreciate the functionality of having that there. Open plan living on the port side is where we find the galley. Once you've got your countertop there, plenty of space. And over here, I'll just show you around. We've got an oven there. And to the right of that, I've got our dishwasher. A spin around and you can see look, more cabinetry, more place. This is to keep your cutlery and crockery and other things. And if I stand here and show you the view, so this is the vantage point you'd get whilst you're preparing your food. Notice the three portholes over there on the starboard side, three portholes over there on the port side as well. In fact, it's four, there's another one there. And over here on the left-hand side of the galley, we've got our induction hob and another porthole there. And look, if I show you a close up of that traditional porthole there, look at that brass porthole. We've got a sink over here as well, and some more storage and cabinetry underneath. Uh, moving out of the galley, we've got our L-shaped seating area over here on the port side. Obviously freestanding table there. If I come and sit here, just to show you the vantage point from this particular 
area. Behind that cabinetry is a TV. So you can sit here, enjoy your meal, have a chat with your family and friends. And then when all the conversations run out, you can switch on the TV and check out your favorite YouTubers. So yeah, let's just take in this view. Lots of headroom in here as well. I mean, I'm six foot four. It's probably about five or six inches of headroom above me as well. So really nice, airy space, living space. Lots of natural light coming in here. You can up the, open up the portholes as well uh, to get some ventilation if you so wish. Some more drawers over there as well. Let me take you out into the cockpit area. Now you're probably wondering when I look at, uh, or when I show you this, well, what about the seating? Where can you sit if you want to get some alfresco dining underway? Well, stay tuned because I'll show you where you would sit if you did want to eat outside. But look, look at this. Canoe shaped stern there as well. Scuppers over there. Underneath this hatch is where you get access to the steering gear as well. So if I just walk over here, you'll be able to see the davits there, port davit and starboard davit over there. Okay, let's head back into the saloon and I'm gonna take you down into the master cabin, which is accessed over here on the starboard side. So we descend these stairs. You see plenty to grab onto, you've got a fiddle rail around here. So if you are descending down into your cabin to get some shut eye, you've got plenty of stuff you can grab onto. And here we go. Welcome to the master cabin. When I first saw that, I thought maybe that is the ship's cat, but it's not obviously, it's just a rug. <laughs> but yeah, really, really great area here. Elevated bed, you can walk all around. So at the moment you're looking at the starboard side, cabinetry up there to stow away your stuff. And you've got some more storage space underneath the bed as well. And look, as I say, you can walk all the way around the bed. Your cabinet over there, your sockets, and some more storage over here on this bulkhead as well. You've got your lamps over there, and behind that hatch is the access to part of the steering gear as well. Uh, those chain cords are for the light and the ventilation. But yeah, let's spin around on this bulkhead. Got a radiator, got a Kabola heater system on here. The mirror, I'll chop off a standard Royal Navy salute and show you into the ensuite, which has a decent sized shower. No rain head, but you don't need a rain head in every shower. Heated towel rail over there on that bulkhead. And over on this side, we've got our sink with some additional storage underneath and another mirror with some more storage behind that. But yeah, let me know what you think of this owner's cabin. Let me know in the comments. Uh, like I say, really spacious, lots of headroom in here. And you benefit from less motion because obviously you're at the stern of the vessel as well. Okay, let's head back up into the saloon. Now as I'm walking up here, just something I wanna remind you, if you are looking for a boat to charter, regardless of the size of the boat, you want to charter regardless of where in the world you want to go then make sure you get in contact with me because i can arrange that for you regardless of your budget or where you want to go so yeah let's have another quick pan around of the saloon and galley fantastic so moving forward over here on the port side this um, door leads us into a utility room as you can see you've got two you've got a washer and a dryer there a fridge in there. I'm going to take you in there in a second, but something I want to point out, just in case I forget, uh, is this floor is a false floor. So when this was a trawler, fishing trawler, that wasn't there. You'd go into the engine room and it'd be split over two levels. But obviously, because this is a liverboard, um, the owner at the time put this in here and turned this into a bit of a utility room. As you can see, you can access uh, this area through that forward door. But for now, I'm gonna take you into the forward accommodation. And as we walk back towards the engine room, I'll walk through there so you can have a better look at that in a second. 
So to get into the forward accommodation, enter this door over on the starboard side, descend down these stairs, and let's just sit here for a second and show you that. Because again, when I come on these kind of boats, I have a picture in my mind of what the boat's gonna look like on the interior. And to be honest with you, this far exceeded my expectations. Because of the space, the layout, the headroom, the amount of natural light you're getting down here. If I show you here, look, from the other side of this vantage point, that is where the fish would have been lowered into the hold when this was a fishing trawler. As I say, she was built in the early 60s. So let's start off with this double cabin over here on the port side. As you can see, we've got a double bed there, a radiator, some storage over there for your stuff, your clothes, and a skylight here, allowing the natural light to come into this space. Again, lots of headroom, handy little area at the foot of the bed there to store some stuff. A nice picture there. And here we go. If I show you in this area, we've got a shared ensuite here. So again, we've got the shower, the loo down there on the right. And over here on the left hand side is where we've got the sink and of course another mirror some more storage over there so this particular bathroom is shared with this other guest cabin so let me walk forward and just so you can orientate yourself i'm on the port side of the boat at the moment so we've got another double bed here look some more storage another radiator over there on that bulkhead if I stand up and just quickly spin around, you can see you've got some more storage. I'll open that up for you. So yeah, you can fit quite a bit of gear in there. I could certainly fit my entire wardrobe in there probably. And look, I love the fact you've got this little porthole on the door as well. Uh, let's head over onto the starboard side. Now, this particular area uh, is used by the owner as, as an office really, um, and a space for some additional storage. Uh, but at some point in this boat's life, uh, it was also used as a room for a child. So you can kind of do with this space as you wish, depending on what your cruising needs are. Turn it into another cabin if you want to. Obviously got some more cold storage over there. Another cupboard. And of course, another skylight. So again, you've got a really good diffraction of the natural light in this living area. I must admit, when I came on board, I thought it'd be a lot darker down here. But yeah, I mean, the owner that took this boat through the conversion, the refit, has done a fantastic job. So again, we've got a shared bathroom here. Similar layout as to the uh, other bathroom on the port side, sink, cabinetry underneath that, and another double bed. Again, you've got another radiator over there with a thermostat electronic thermostat on that and look you've got some more space so you can put some books or whatever else you want to put at the end there with some more cabinetry and up there another skylight so that is the accommodation area let's come back out into the main companionway and I'll show you the VIP cabin that's forward again look you've got lots to grab onto as you're making your way around the boat uh, really really important for rough weather cruising but look let me know what you think of this VIP cabin. Again, a big old threshold in there. Another cat on the deck there. But yeah, double bed. Again, you can walk around this double bed, both on the port side, and look, you can see the angle and the shape of the hull as well. Over there on the starboard side, we walk around there. You've got your power sockets, little table there to stow your stuff on and some more storage areas up there as well. And again, you've got another cupboard in there, hanging locker space. I'll open that up for you. You could turn it into hanging locker space if you wanted to. But look, as you can see, that's one of the uh, skylights that we were looking at when we were up on the upper deck. So yeah, this is the VIP cabin. Again, let me know what you think in the comments. Plenty of headroom in here. So yeah, if you are quite tall, you're not gonna be banging your head every time you move around the boat. Okay, let's spin around now, do 180, and 
and we're head aft. I'm sure some of you are curious to know what is underneath this hatch, so I'll just lift this up for you. There you go. One of the tanks, I think that's the grey water tank actually. Nice big heavy hatch there. Really, really rugged stuff. Okay, let's ascend these ladders. Come back out into this area. Okay, so now we find ourselves back in the utility room that I showed you uh, a little bit earlier on in the video. Over here on the starboard side, uh, this is a heater, pellet heater. So you can put your pellets in there, another way of heating up the boat. There's actually three ways of heating this boat. This is one of them. Um, you've also got the Kabola system as well, but you can also draw on the solar energy. The solar panels that are on the wheelhouse roof, uh, you can use them as well to heat the boat when you're in your area that is more or sunnier than what it is today in the Netherlands. Washer dryer over there on the port side. And now let me take you into the engine room. And if you love engines and marine engineering, you're gonna find this area a real treat. As you will see in a minute, the boat is fitted with a single 250 horsepower ABC engine that has an output of 184 kilowatts. The maximum speed is 8.5 knots with a cruising speed of seven knots. Fuel consumption is around 25 liters per hour, which means that thanks to her two still 10,000 liter fuel tanks, then she has a range of around 5,000 nautical miles. There is also a 450 liter capacity day tank. The engine itself features a closed keel cooling system and is connected via a shaft drive. Engine controls include the Bowden cable mechanisms and a hydraulic Bravo gearbox. Additionally, there is a mechanical electric Corkman Beta 40E 220 volt 20 horsepower bow thruster and that was installed in 2021. The exhaust system is dry and the propeller is of a fixed type. I do like the fact that this boat has a tool station in the engine room on this bulkhead. So if you do have to do any basic tooling or minor repairs, then you've got everything you need right here. The electrical system on board this boat includes a 24, 220 and 400 volt installation, a Stamford 20 kVA generator, and a Lister Petter Stamford 15 kVA generator. The start battery is not required as the main engine uses compressed air starting with a 720 AH service battery installed in 2019. There is a Victron battery monitor and a Victron Quattro 100 amp battery charger and inverter. Solar power is supported by four Jinko 440 WP panels with a Victron MPPT smart controller installed in 2023. Shore power connectivity includes 230 and 400 volt AC with a Victron 3600 insulation transformer. Additional equipment includes air compressor, hydraulic pack and a double fuel filter system. But I'm always interested to hear what you think of the engine rooms that I tour. So share your thoughts in the comments below. And now the moment that I know many of you have been waiting for. Let's fire up this engine. Hearing an engine like that turning over that was built in the 1960s, I'm sure you would agree, is very special. It really is a unique noise. So that was the engine room. I'm really, really interested to hear what you think of that space. Uh, let me know in the comments. I mean, you know, what an absolute testament to the engineering prowess behind that engine. The fact that she is still running and in such excellent condition. Uh, something I might have missed actually over here on the starboard side. We do have a day head there as well. Right, let's shut that and let me take you up into the wheelhouse. It's not often that you get to roam around the wheelhouse of a trawler that was built in the 1960s, but here we go. For navigation, the boat has a Simrad radar and GPS. And in addition to the original Cestral compass, 
There is also a Furuno satellite compass on board as well. This lever over here on the right hand side selects either forward, neutral or reverse. And you control the speed of the vessel using this disc over here on the right hand side. Something I've never seen before. Of course there is good visibility up here and even though I always prefer those forward raking windows on a wheelhouse like this, I do think the straight windows also look good. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. I'd also be really interested to know whether you've ever been on board a trawler from the 1960s. And behind the helm station, we have a nice seating area over here so your guests, family and friends can watch as you take command of this really, really special vessel. And by the way, if you're looking to upgrade your yacht or boat software management, uh, then I have teamed up with Aquatool Marine. Uh, you'll find out lots of information if you click on the link that I'll leave pinned in the comments uh, or in the link in, on the video description as well. And look, if I just show you up here, look at that. You don't often see a traditional compass like that located on that area. And over here on the starboard side, if you prefer working with paper charts and you've got an area here that your, your navigator can use to plot where you're going to be visiting next. But yeah, look at this, it's like going back in time. Really, really unique, really, really special. And if I move aft, in here we've got another area that at the moment is actually being used, it's kind of like a ship's office really. Of course, got a TV over there on that bulkhead, a radiator down there, and over here on the port side. If you wanted to catch up with some emails, do some work whilst you're underway, you can perch yourself there. And look, you can still get a good eye on what is going on in terms of navigating the boat, thanks to that massive window there. And one thing that some of you might find interesting is the fact that this light feature here is the original, or one of the original light features. So that has been on this boat since she was built. Look at that window there. Another light feature over on that bulkhead, another one over there. I'll just show you this area once more. Again, plenty of headroom in here. I've not opened this yet. Let's have a look and see what we've got in here. Hopefully it's not the ship's cat. Not just some stuff to stow away your books or charts whatever it is you want to keep in there. Now, earlier on in the video, I said to you about alfresco dining. Where would you go? Well, this is where you would go. And what a fantastic area here, look. Decent sized table there, freestanding, so you can bring your own furniture. Obviously freestanding chairs there as well. But what a view. And look, you can get some shade from the sun. Again, if you are lucky enough to be navigating in an area of the world that is blessed with lots of sunshine, then you can get some shade here. Underneath that cover is a barbecue as well. So yeah, really, really fantastic area. Obviously over here on the pool side, a life buoy. Again, if you are looking to upgrade any of your safety gear on board, make sure you check out my Amazon affiliate store. Again, you'll find the link for that in the video description and pinned in the comments. As you can see here, on the pool side is the door that takes us back into the wheelhouse. So you don't have a Portuguese bridge on here, but I guess if you wanted to, uh, if you really wanted to, then you could get one put on here. There's one of the life rafts over there, really well positioned life raft on the outboard side. And look, it's just been around, show you some of the beautiful views. I absolutely love the Netherlands. I've spent quite a lot of time here recently. Uh, the people are so friendly. It's such a lovely, lovely country. I really do enjoy my time here. Let me just show you over here on the starboard side. So you can see that it's pretty much symmetrical, really. So you've got the same layout and same setup. Access door over there on the starboard side that will take you back in to the wheelhouse. So thanks for joining me on this boat tour. I really hope you've enjoyed having a look around this fascinating vessel. At the time of making and uploading this video to my YouTube channel, 
This boat is currently listed for sale with the Volk Yacht Brokers. If you want to find out more, I'll leave a link in the video description. I'd like to say a big thank you to the Volk Yacht Brokers and to the owner of the boat for letting me come on board and show you guys around. Also, I'd like to say thank you to Mark from the Volk for being my cameraman and filming this while I do my intro and outro. He's done a sterling job. If you've got any boats you'd like me to feature on my YouTube channel, feel free to get in contact with me. You'll find all of my contact details in the video description by following the link there. And I'll also pin a link in the comments as well. So thanks for watching. Until next time, fair winds and following seas. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure you check out the video that I made about this green hulled trawler. And also be sure to check out the video that I made about this Anache trawler. You'll find the link for both videos in the video description. By the way, I have set up a new blog and if you love Explorer, Trawler or Expedition Yachts as well as Coastal Explorers, then be sure to sign up for it. It's completely free and you'll find the link in the video description. I must say a huge thank you to my channel members for supporting my channel by becoming a member. I really do appreciate it. You never know what you're going to get when it comes to your payments from YouTube. So having some sort of steady monthly income certainly does help. So thank you. If you'd like to find out more about what channel membership is all about, then you'll find all the relevant buttons on the YouTube homepage that you can see when you visit my profile.